We're about to just create all this code from scratch, but it's nice to have uh, some guide. So right here, the Java points a pretty good guide as a nice class uh, or interface subclass structure here to check out. We're going to be doing basically what they're doing right here and checking out the output. So let's get started. Now I want to make a set. So I got set s equals new set. I'm going to put string in it, fill it up with strings. And you see right away we have a problem. There's a few issues with this. So we need to import some stuff so that uh, Java knows what a set is. So Java util set is a library we need. But we have another problem. It's not that set is unknown, but set is an interface. It's abstract. So you cannot create a object of type set. So there's a couple different options. One of them is hash set. Uh, but you're going to notice we have another problem, add import for hash set, okay? Uh, we're going to be using iterator soon, so while we're importing stuff, if I just call the iterator method, oh, I thought we need Java iterator as well. Okay, maybe not. Ignore all that. So we're going to be building a new hash set, that's fine. The website I just showed you used a, a linked set or some other type of set. There's different types of sets. I'm not going to get into the nuances of the different types of sets. Uh, we're just going to use a hash set in this fine. So let's see what we can do with this set. S dot, we get to see everything in uh, all the public methods here in a set. We're looking at the bold ones and I'm going to just, just use the add right here. S add. So I'll add myself, Chris. And of course, if you run this, you're not going to see any output that's useful because we need to print it. So I'm going to sout tab and we'll just print out S. Here we go. All right, so you see Chris is in the set, no problem. I'm going to duplicate that line of code, run again. Look at that. I added Chris twice, but it only appears once. So that was in the uh, Java doc that we looked at in the last video. Now if I run it again, I added something different. Chris C is not equal to Chris. So you can add multiple things, of course. And we'll go ahead and add a few different items here. We'll add Rosa. Jan or Jan and somebody else. We'll add Nicole. All right, run this. And we see them print out. Okay, great. Let's go ahead. I mentioned order doesn't matter. Let's go ahead and change the order a little bit here. Well, you can already see it put Jan at the front, which obviously that was not as it happened. And if you look, this order that I'm changing, I'll put Rosa above, put, let's see, Jan, put that in the middle, run it again. All right, what in the world's happening? Well, the order doesn't matter. So you should not be thinking of this as a zero element. There is no order here. So the fact that any of uh, Jan appears before anything else is irrelevant. There is a hash code, uh, which I will get into in a minute in the next video. But for now, just remember the order is not important. And hopefully I just proved it to you right there. We can't add duplicates. Uh, we could add a null. Let's go ahead, have fun, do that. Uh, and notice there is no warning about adding something twice. It just, Java just went about it, didn't mention anything. Uh, so you're not going to get any type of warning that something was added twice. Although I didn't actually read what should be popping up. All right, so this add is a Boolean. Dun, dun. More formally, blah, blah, blah. If the set already contains the element, the call leaves the set unchanged and returns false. I could have checked the return value. That's the only way you'd know you're adding a duplicate. So this does return a Boolean. So you could check if the add method returned true or false. And that would mean you tried to add a duplicate. 